Okay. Uh, Did he say clap? I, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is he kidding? Start rolling. Thalidomide. Ted Talks. Threesome. Balls. My name is Fat Mike. I'm an old punk rocker. Who's more well known for being a shit talker? A troublemaker and iconoclast. I thought I'd do more damage with my own podcast. Richard Branson. Dreadful deformity. Neck job. Bondage. Tally gets mittens for Christmas. It's kind of hard to wear high heels or slip on banana peels. How do I get in and out of tubs? You know I didn't get mad. I totally thought the song was good, not bad. Because they think that I'm totally right, I'm not. There it is. Hi. Hello, Tally. Hi. Hi. That, that was you uh, re-singing lyrics to the song. That, that was me. I thought you were playing the real She's Nubs. You played my version. That's cool. Well, yeah, because everyone's heard my version. True. Uh, this is so cool that you're on my internet podcast, Fat Mike's Fat Mike. Is that what it's called? That's yeah, a good name. Come on. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. This is exciting. Uh, you're not here. You are in Toronto. I, I am. And it's dark here. And it's like it's a nine o'clock. It's a miserable place. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry you have to be there. So we've been friends for quite a while. Uh, really long. Really good friends. And, you yeah. know, besides Joan Jett, you're like the coolest woman I know. I mean. Wow. That's like a. I'm up there with Joan. That's amazing. Well, you didn't say I'm up there with Joan, but no, no, well, of course not. Uh, but <laughs> uh, and I only know like five women, so thank you. But uh, you are really awesome. Uh, you've done so much that people don't know. I think uh, in your life, and you know, I I'm pretty. I would guess that you are the happiest uh, person in the, on the planet. You know, with no arms and really short legs. What do you think? I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. You've been really, really happy. Oh, yeah. I've been, most of my life, I've been the happiest. Yeah. I mean, right now, you, you know, it's COVID. You got a cat. Yeah. Can't get around. But uh, well, you, you know what the coolest thing about me being like gone through so much bullshit is that my songs are way better now. Yeah. Oh, do that again. Yeah, it's awesome. Songs are way better. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I've heard uh, a couple of your songs, and they are really good. In fact, we're going to work you. to work together. Thank you. I'm, that means a lot to me, and I'm very excited about it. Yeah, and I, I kind of mean it too. So I, I know you too. <laughs> so, first of all, when did we meet? What year was it? It was. Uh, this is taking too long. Let's just make up a date. Nineteen ninety-eight. It was, it was 2000. It was 2000. It's 2000. Uh, I have a picture of it. Yeah. Look you have a that. picture of the first day we met? Well, I don't know. It was, it was pretty close. Look at that. Look how long, uh, not long you are. Look how young you are. Look at, my, look at my the, confused face. Uh, is it the one where I'm on your shoulders? No. You're on my shoulders? Yeah, wow. the first work, first work tour with me for some gimme gimmies. Oh, yeah. Which I, there's a picture. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. it's cool. It's just we met a long time ago. Do you remember what I first said to you when I saw you? What happened to you? <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, what, what the next thing I said? Because I remember. Did you, you said what? Well, you said what happened to you, and I said. Did, uh, no, I said, did your mom take thalidomide or something? 
You did say that. I forgot that. <laughs> Whenever I tell the story, I forgot that part. It oh, yeah. Probably made me better, but. No, I, I, that's the thing. I, I just gave you shit right away because I wanted to know. And I, I have to say, I loved that about you. Like that's whenever I tell people a story, I'm just like, Hey, and you're like, Hey, what happened to you? Like what? Who says that? But I, I got, like, but it got worse. Did your mother take thalidomide? You're like, no, thalidomide. no. And then, I, and then I said to you, I'm too young for that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's from the seventies. So thanks. Yeah. And then, I uh, kind of in, instantly we became friends. Yeah. And I said, uh, what's the roughest thing about being, you know, uh, short and weird. And what'd you tell me? You remember? You said, being at a punk oh. show, you said. All the asses and cocks in my face? Farts. You said. Oh, the farts. Yeah. yeah the farts are right here in my, in my face all the time. It's true. It's true. Yeah. I, I, like, I, you didn't I say the cocks. I, I, don't, I don't think you mind the cocks part. No, no, I don't mind the cocks. Yeah. But let me just tell you, one year, no effects didn't come to Toronto, but they went to Ohio. So me and my friend drove out to Ohio to see you at Warp Tour. And that was the stinkiest crowd I've ever been in in my whole life. Ugh. Just all the asses and balls in my face. <laughs> and it was so balls. Oh, you know, if that's the worst thing in your life, you're doing pretty well. <laughs> Some people uh, love asses and balls in their face. And well, de depending on the time. Like clean ones. Warp Tour asses and balls are not clean. <sighs> Well, no, they're not. Uh, we we do have tricks that we do. You know, we used to use pool chalk uh, on the balls. I had to chalk up every every day. Pool chalk on your balls for real? Well, that's what what you did when you didn't. You know, when we didn't know any better, it turned into antiperspirant. You know, I think I learned I, that from New Fun Glory. How sad. Uh, so we met, uh, and we hung out that night, had a good time, and then uh, we didn't talk. And no. then I wrote a song about you. Yeah, and I didn't even know. Well, why would I tell you? What? I wanted it to be a surprise. You were nervous, though. You are like, oh, I don't know if she's going to like this. So you bought the record. I bought the record, and I listened, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and me at the time, I was so young, and I was like, there's no way they wrote a song about me, but who else would it yeah, be Yeah, what's about? the other, uh, yeah, girl from, from know, Toronto with, I, with no arms. Right, so what I did was, I was like, well, I need to find out. So I did what you do at that time in the 2000s, and I went to Fat Records and clicked on Contact Us. Yeah. And then I wrote them an email I, and I, said, like, hey, I heard the song. I called you. Uh, you emailed me. Yeah, yeah. Like, the next day, and I was just like, holy fucking shit. Well, I was, I was I was hoping that you listened to it. And do you remember what you wrote me? You know, you were like, "Thanks for writing the song. It's cool." But, I loved it. Yeah, but you said, "But you got a couple Sorry. things wrong." So many things wrong. You said, "I can give good fucking head." That's oh, that's what I got. That's my that's <laughs> that's my move. Did I say that? Oh yeah. And I love that I had that much confidence back then about that. It's still my, it's, I'm still, well, I'm actually way better at it now. You, like, well, yeah. you, you know, you, you can't give the, the two-handed uh, hand job, you know. I can do arm and chin and neck. Believe me. Believe me. Arm, and, chin, and neck. Yeah, like this. The arm, chin, and neck job. Yeah, around here and the arm and the feet. Oh. I can do so so and, so you're doing that and you're putting your foot in a butt or 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 you know this is too much for me. Uh, just my mind <laughs> uh like of course blowjobs are my thing but you know start off you got to start off you right. start off and it's like my arm and my neck are so much softer than a hand oh okay i i believe you <laughs> I, i've always believed you. you you don't lie you don't drink uh, I don't. You don't go to the bathroom? No. Uh, you, you told me we were hanging out uh, at some after hours club. And you're like, Mike, there's one thing I really can't do. I really hate it when I have to go use a public toilet. And there's pee on the seat. So I can do it, but it sucks. I know. And you're like, because I, you know, I asked, hey, Tal, you want to help me help you cut that chicken? You're like, oh, I can cut this chicken. You want me to help you do this? Oh, I got this, Mike. But, yeah. but the first, the only thing you ever asked me for, 
can you clean off this toilet seat? I so I, I can. That. Well, yeah, because it's, you, you got to kind of jump on the seat and before you can, you know, get into position. So I helped I you out. I'm, I'm your bro. I cleaned the pee off the seat for you. Did I remember that? Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, you know, we're bros. Now, now with COVID, like, how come you remember like, so little about our friendship? And I remember so I much. I remember that. Oh, okay. I remember that. Yeah. All right. I just don't remember the thalidomide, but probably because I put it. Like out of my, I didn't want to remember that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You, you suppressed it. Okay, I'm sorry, but you know I that's what that. I do when I meet someone who is, you know, might feel uncomfortable. Like when I meet someone in a wheelchair, I go, uh, "What was it? Was it wake, was it wakeboarding or BMX?" And half the time, like it was BMX. It's one of those. Yeah. Or you say, "What are you lazy?" I've heard you say that before. <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah, uh, that yeah, was kind of meaner. <laughs> sorry. I've heard it. You said that to me before, and I was like, "You can't say that to me." Oh, you're not lazy. I'm not lazy. You get you you spiked up my mohawk once. I did. Oh, I should have sent you photos of that. Oh, I have a photo of that too. Uh, we should too. Yeah. All right. Which with that, but doing a mohawk, you doing a mohawk with a blow dryer and hairspray brings me to this. Uh, you are fucking on TED Talks, and yeah. I'm going to show that video right now. Okay. All I wanted at that point in my life to fit in. I would do anything to look like the other kids. So I was fitted with prosthetic arms and legs. My legs were kind of like stilts, but with shoes. When I put on my prosthetic legs, it was different. I was the same height as the other kids. I could look at them in the eyes, and I was no longer the shortest one in the class. With my new legs, I had to learn how to walk again. I had to learn how to fall down and not get hurt. I was so desperate to fit in. It didn't work. Kids still didn't want to play with me at recess. This was so frustrating because I believed I was like everyone else. But when people saw me, their first impression was that I wasn't. Yeah, uh, I just recently watched that, and it's so amazing. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're really brave, and, and you're so uh, articulate and well-spoken, and that's what you do, is you speak. You publicly speak for a living. Yep. And how did that feel to be on TED Talks? I mean, come on. That is so... <sighs> it, it was a, a dream of mine for like a few for years. And then I quit my job to be a speaker full time. And a year later I was doing a Ted talk and I just, I couldn't believe it. Now the funny thing is, is that I've been speaking for so many years now that I'm actually a way better speaker than that now. And now I want to do another one, <laughs> but it was, it's, it, it was incredible. Like it was one of the most amazing nights. Like I, I, I spoke in front of thousands of people with the Ted logo behind me. Like it was pretty cool. It's, it's really, really cool. Uh, it's just one of the many, many things you've done. Uh, well, you didn't mention on the Ted talks, you were talking about how some other people that are limbless, uh, didn't, I've never had a boyfriend or I've never gotten laid. And, uh, you were like steaming up. Cause you're like, I get laid all the time. I mean, you, <laughs> you were a little promiscuous, weren't you? Well, not when I was a teenager. But. You, when did you become promiscuous, Tally? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying at, at punk rock bowling, <laughs> at punk rock bowling, you told me that you had a good time. I love sex a lot. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, but that's cool. Cause, uh, you get it when you want it. Right. I do. I even, it's I even my, I, I, we have mutual friends, a couple and you hooked up with them for a while too. <laughs> You're getting crazy, Tally. Well, you know, I always feel like people are going to be super judgmental, but they surprise me. They don't. They don't look past the tits, I guess. Well, you know, you're, you're kind of stacked. But what you said in the TED talk is it's all confidence, and yeah. you have so much confidence. And, yeah, well, and, what, and that's very said, attractive. I mean, you like you're you're what are you Arab or something? Um. There's a huge mix, but like Iraq, mix. I'm Jewish Iraq, you're, and we get along. It's because of the I'm confidence. Jewish too. I'm Jewish too. Oh, birth, that, by birth. 
Mm. All right. Judish. You're funny. Judish. I got that from you. Yeah. Well, you know, you're smart and funny, so it comes with it. Uh, <laughs> so, and then suddenly, well, before TED Talks, you used to work for Virgin. Yeah. Uh, and uh, apparently you made an impression. Yep, I won some awards. Uh, what kind of an award did you win at Virgin? Well, I did customer service via social media. And before that, I did customer service and I won best customer service. <laughs> did you get your photo on, on, the, the, on the hallway? No, I no, got to. No, I know what you did. I'm going to show right now what you but, did. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. I got best customer service out of um, all the Americas, like North and South. But then with Virgin, Richard Branson, I got, I won a Virgin Star of the Year, it was called. And I won best customer service out of all of his companies in the entire world. Wow. Which is like psychotic. I've but. never won any kind of customer service award. I'm not shocked by that. I know. I got, I think I got the biggest jerk award once. Uh, oh. But I'm just going to, you didn't just win an award. You got to go to Richard Branson's island. Look I at did. that. It was honestly like he's pointing. Really, he's pointing at you. He's pointing at saying, "Look, no arms." <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it gets better. Yeah. Look at this one. You are feeding Richard Branson cake, chocolate cake. Yeah. Is that before you French kissed? Uh, or after? Yeah, before. Before. I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, and he's staring at me as, with his dreamy eyes. You see the eye contact there? There was a moment. I do. Uh, it, it, it's something. His nostrils look kind of weird. He looks kind of fucked up. Did you roofie him and take advantage of him? That's what he I'm guessing. He was definitely a little bit drunk. <laughs> but how cool. You know? And yeah. uh, should I play this? I'm going to play a little bit of this. Like, okay. not many people have a testimonial from Richard Branson. Well, I've been lucky enough to have met some incredible people uh, in my lifetime. Uh, I'm sitting here on Necker Island where we've had Nelson Mandela, Kofi Annan, um, Archbishop Tutu, uh, President Carter. Um, and I'm name dropping for a good reason because I think that uh, of the 10 uh, people that I, I find most inspirational in the world, uh, Tally is one of them. Um, she's an extraordinary person. Um, she was born with, uh, with with dreadful deformity, and uh, and uh, and she's just overcome it dreadful. In, the most, in the most incredible way. Dreadful. Um, she's a wonderfully inspirational person. Uh, we all love her. That's enough. Enormously. I, I love that. I love. He says. Dreadfully, dreadful, just like it's so horrible, but it's coming from him, so it doesn't sound bad. I mean, you know, uh, it doesn't. You, I, and and I don't know who those other people he was talking about, but oh my gosh! But it's just, it, that's so cool that you made such an impression, and uh, such an impression that next Christmas when they gave Christmas bonuses and Christmas gifts to their employees, what did they send you? Some red mittens. <laughs> they said you mittens. And then I put them on the ends of my arms and I posted to Instagram, thank you, Virgin, for the mittens. Ah, that's that was, that was the best. That was the best. That, that's, yeah. It, I was laughing for a long time. I know. That is the best. So <clears throat> this is fun talking to you. Uh, do you want to talk about... Uh, the kinky exploits we've done, or do you want to talk about other stuff that's more serious? We can talk about all of it. Well, we're talking about all of it. Oh. Right now, uh, okay, we'll just do the fun stuff. Remember the first time we went to a dungeon together? Yes. In Toronto? Yes, I was terrified and excited at the same time. Right, and it was with Mistress Nadia, Nadia, and we get you in there, and there's a St. Andrew's cross, I'm like, uh, yeah, let's get her up there. <laughs> and the and the dom's like, how? <laughs> uh, how are we gonna tie her arms anywhere? That's part of the whole deal. Yeah. But but uh, we figured it out, and uh, that was cool, right? It was. It was your first experience. I realized uh, very quickly that I'm not a masochist, but yes, it was fun. No, you are a dom. 
I don't know. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm very, it's funny. Like I am, but lately, I don't know. I like a really dominant man lately. So, well, you know, you can be a switch. I am. I am a switch. Right. Uh, I've there, there's you in an awesome latex outfit. Look at that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, You were Dom uh, with your partner for a while. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna just just show these hot ass photos. Uh, you were wearing a lot of latex. I do like latex. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but you are. Uh, I remember kind of teaching you how to how to cane. Yeah, you did, and you were impressed with my skills. Well, yeah. I mean, you're, you're using a cane with your feet. I did my feet and I did a whip with my shoulder and chin. Yeah, a flogger. Very impressive. It, uh, it, you know, you couldn't really hit that hard. But uh, this is you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I mean, that, wait, this isn't, this, this isn't, this isn't you. That's something. Uh, I don't know what that is. I made him scream. And I made marks. Okay. Yeah. It, it's very, very impressive. Uh, but, but you want a man that's dominant now. Well, you, well, you, yeah. you know. Everyone likes to ha- play both sides. Yeah, I didn't know that I though. Just, I know that's what I was texting you. Like that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm because I'm single again. I'm learning about new stuff about my sexuality, which is super fucking fun. Yeah, because I'm not a child. You know, <laughs> you're not a yeah. child. Well, some people like, some people would argue with that because you know I like to if, be manhandled. Mm-hmm. Can you do that? Can you like spin when you're on uh, someone's cock? I bet you could spin. <laughs> Has anyone ever done that? No, actually. Oh, see, you want a man that can do that. Yes, yes, strong arms. I like strong arms. Oh, all right. Well, you should stay away from Jews. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely switchy, but right now it's what I'm into. Okay, well, I have a video of you that's awesome of you being uh, very submissive. Oh, no, that's not it. I got so many videos of you. Uh-oh. Here it is. Here's uh, when you got suspended by Schmears. This is an awesome video. Yeah, that was fun. Hoisted with rope by Meister Schmears, and his assistant Juliana is pulling the rope. Oh, oh. oh is that part? You look stoked. You? Yeah. Absolutely. You do what the fuck you want. Yeah, I do. You live quite a life. Yeah. You don't want to come down, right? You want to stay up there for a while? Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, but what did he do? He took you down. No, I stayed up for like hours. Yeah, minutes, hours, whatever. No, it was, it was like a half hour or something. But uh, it, yeah, but but you live your life. I do. You you've lived such a uh, a cool life. For being, you know, as Richard Branson would say, terribly deformed. <laughs> dreadfully, dreadfully. Dread, dreadfully deformed. <laughs> I've uh, always tried to live my life to the fullest, you know? Like, when that book, The Secret, came out, I was like, what the heck? I've been re- living like that for years, so. Well, that's what know. we do, yeah. you know? And I like to think that I, I helped you by, uh, you know, singing that song and, uh getting you yeah. kind of around the world because because mm, more confidence, more gigs. Uh, it, it, you, you don't know what that song did to me immediately. Like it was everywhere I went, people were like, nubs. Oh my God, are you nubs? And the best one is, excuse me, I don't want to offend you, but are you nubs? <laughs> and they're always stoked to see me. And it's like, they want to hug me. And like they half the time don't even know I'm real. Cause they think you have most of your songs are fictional. And then they're like, what you're a real person. And it's like, I got all this love all over the world, wherever I went, just being me like for, for being me, you know what I mean? Cause the song, a lot of people who don't know you and don't know, you know, can't appreciate no effects, like not punks. They're like, aren't you offended by the offended by those lyrics? I'm like, no, if you really listen to them, they're not offensive at all. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's just about it's, it's just a song it's, about you. My impression, I mean, you made such an impression on me that I wrote a song, and wow. I, I couldn't wait for you to hear it and call me and 
it's so cool. It's we, so cool. And it's funny. You and I have never really talked about it, really. No. Remember that time when we were at Warp Tour and my phone rang and I pulled it out and I went, can't pick up the phone. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can pretty much do all those things that I said you couldn't. Yes, every single one. You do you know- want to know about one thing in my life I haven't mastered yet? Elbows. Putting up. <laughs> putting on a putting on a seatbelt. Oh, that's dangerous. But I'm getting my car modified. Your so car? You mean your little scooter weird thing? No, my Mini Cooper. I'm getting a Mini Cooper modified. Wow, I thought you'd get some kind of a SUV, like a Tahoe or something. Escalade. No, you're getting a Mini Cooper. I wanted a mini car for Mini Me. <laughs> that's, you know? that's pretty cool. I like that. And I had to raise a lot. Why don't of money. you get a Tesla and get the, the the drunk driving package? You push a button, it takes you anywhere. I would have loved the Tesla, but I I'm only one girl with a tiny income, so oh. I got I got Mini Cooper to Mini Cooper to give me a deal on a used Mini Cooper. One day I will own a Tesla. That's so cool. You're getting a car because last time we hung out, you you had your little scooter, and it was like what zero degrees. So cold. It was so cold, and it was. We had to go back to this Airbnb, and uh, from the restaurant, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm taking an Uber. You're on your own." <laughs> yeah, that happened the other day. It was so cold here. I was going down the street, and I was screaming because this, the the wind hitting my skin was hurting so much. And then I was texting my friend. I'm like, "Oh, the weather's so brutal." And she's like, "Yeah, I had to drive across town." I'm like. Mm. In your warm fucking car? And you were screaming down the street. People probably thought you were screaming <laughs> for other reasons, just because I, ah! <laughs> not because it was cold. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that image. No, it was brutal. But, you know, I just, I also didn't prepare for it because it said it was going to be 10 degrees, which is not that cold for us. And then it was like, I hate winter. I've wanted to live in California, like, since I was a teenager. And it's going to happen one of these days. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't like winter. I can't handle it. I want to live like this with half my no clothes on, basically. Oh, all right. You can do, wanna, you can do that in California. I don't want to wear clothes and coats and scarves and hats. Mm, I like wearing lots of layers of stuff. Okay, so uh, we found out a lot. You told me a lot of stories, and yeah. I want to ask you some. I want to ask you about them. Okay. You told me. Uh, you were walking down the street one day and a woman came up to you and said, Tally, is that you? Oh yeah. Will you, will you uh, tell me about that again? Okay. That, that was actually, I was actually walking down the street in Quebec city for an OFX well, show. Well, that's important that it was Quebec city. Go ahead. It is important because neither of us lived there. Oh, right, right. My bad. Very- My bad. Well, I was in Quebec city and I'm walking around with my friend and this woman comes up to me and says, excuse me, is your name Tally? And I'm like, yes. And then her eyes well up with tears immediately. And she starts crying and telling me that she is the one who took care of me from the day that I was put up for adoption in Montreal until the day I was adopted. And she told me all these stories about how she loved me and she took me to the park and she took me. And some other nurses uh, looked after you too. Yeah. Yeah. But she was, I think she was one of the main ones because she actually like loved me. She wanted to adopt me, I think. That's amazing. And, and uh, because uh, your parents just kind of bailed. Right. When they, they saw me and saw that I was missing arms and shortened legs, they bailed. Which, and I read it. I read it in a piece of paper that they bailed because of that reason. So I know it's a fact, which is so lame. Like, so it, lame. It's super lame. Because uh, I'm, you know. Well, yeah, you're amazing. Uh, and, and tell me about who adopted you, because this is awesome, too. I should have sent you a photo. So well, You know what? Uh, let, I'll show a photo right now. Send it to me, and I'll put it in here. Okay. Okay. And how many people are in this photo? So my parents uh, adopted me, Gina and Ray, and I joined a family of 22 people. And Mormons, right? Pardon? Mormons. Must be Mormons. No, No, my parents had one biological son, my brother John, and then they adopted 19 of us. And 
I grew up in a house full of 20, 22 people and it was kind of like the United Nations because I had black brothers and sisters, Chinese, Vietnamese, and a whole bunch of indigenous siblings. And of course- Any Irish? White. Irish? Yeah, yeah, Irish. My dad's- <laughs> A lot of Irish. families don't take the Irish. My dad's Irish Scottish, so no adopted, no adopted. Mm. So was he abusive? Drink, would he drink a lot? Be abusive? <laughs> no, my dad was the kindest, sweetest guy. And, and all the people, I mean, adopting 19 kids and- and all of them were... Uh, no, not all. About not, half. About half were a little, you know, little... Uh, special. Special, special needs. Yeah. Special needs. <laughs> special needs. What are you doing? woo They were a little... I'm, I'm trying to remember <laughs> what Richard Branson said. Oh. <laughs> monstrously <Dreadfully>. deformed. <laughs> <laughs> Only half of us were dreadfully, monstrously right. deformed. But what? that's so amazing. Yeah, they're pretty amazing people. Is they still around? My mom is, not my dad. Mm. And they must be so incredibly proud of you. I mean, your mom. And my dad was too. Yeah. my my. I never knew for years because like being in punk rock, my mom always thought I was just like a drug addict and an alcoholic. And she's like, you just drink and do drugs. And I'm like, I literally don't do any of those no, things. No, just, just my friends do. Just my friends. All my friends do, do drugs and are alcoholics, but not me. And she's like, I don't believe you. For so long. Well, the punk rock and the way I look, she's like, they thought it was a stage. I'm like, it's not a stage. I'm punk. But now she's she's proud of me now, which is nice. And it's just nice. It's always nice to know. And you talk to a lot of your uh, siblings? Not a lot, but like a couple. Yeah, that's a lot of people to talk to. 20. And, I, and my parents adopted two of my nieces as well. So... Because their their parents couldn't take care of them. Actually, one of my sisters died. Two of my sisters died, actually. But one of them that had a child died. Anyways, yeah. I told you I've gone through some shit in that's, the past. That's what you get. Years. Yeah. For having so many kids. I don't know. That's just what. You, <laughs> whenever I hear anything bad happens, I say that's what you get. Yeah. I got COVID. That's, that's what I get. That's what you. Yeah, that is what you get. So, uh, a few years ago, you. Looked up your biological mom. It was about, in, it was like 2006. Yeah. Sorry, 2016. 2016. Uh, I looked you, up my birth parents, yeah. You told me that. It was, uh, it hit me pretty hard when you told me that. Did it? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I, I don't have, I haven't had parents in like 15 years. And yeah. uh, they weren't really around that much. But. I know that you you wanted to you you didn't necessarily want a relationship. You just no. wanted to tell them I'm happy. I'm on TED yeah. Talks. Yeah. I'm 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 somebody and I want you to know that uh that your child is special and happy and wonderful. And I kind of wanted them to like feel like fuck, you know? Yeah. Like we blew it. You, they did. They did blow it. And, and it's funny because they seemed all excited at first and then they just kept bailing and bailing. So did you, you uh, No. You uh, well, yeah. No. And I told myself I wasn't going to let my heart in because I have amazing parents and amazing family. And then I did. And then they bombed me out. It's like, you rejected me twice. Seriously. And now I'm like, they're done. Like, and you know what's crazy? I have two birth sisters. They're like a, just a couple years younger than me. Well, one is one year younger than me, and I always say they tried again and they didn't fuck up that time, so they kept that one. And you appreciate that humor. You don't even laugh. You are like sad. Everyone is always like, oh, but that's our humor. It's, it's yeah, well, yeah. No, because I'm sad. But it, but it is sad. I'm, it, it's true. They didn't fuck up and they kept it. And then and then they had another one, so two girls and. You know, I always wonder about them. I wonder what they look like. I don't have any anybody who looks like me, you know? And one day, one of my brother, like my, not my birth brother, obviously, one of my brother's birth sisters was looking for my brother and found me because that's how easy I am to find. And was like, hey, do you have a brother named Joshua? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, first of all, blown away. Like, oh my God, I can do this for this person. And I... It, put them in touch with my brother. Secondly, I was like, fuck those sisters of mine. They can, all they have to do is type in girl with no arms. 
I would come up. Pally, no arms. I would come up. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know how easy it is to find me. Yeah. And, like, and, and it's not like you're a bum out to be around. You're, you're awesome to be, to be around. I'm super fun. <laughs> you're super fun. And so, uh, I'm sorry, you know, that your parents are so lame, but you know what? Parents are lame. Uh, they are, but my, but my birth sisters, it's a bit more disappointing though. Like, well, yeah, but you didn't grow up with them. No, you, but don't they want to know who I am? Mm. I'm curious. Well, I mean, fuck, I had a dad that was around and he didn't want to know. And, you know, That's true. I had That's to true. see you know, your mom made me see you twice a month. You know, I didn't want to see you. Like, oh. Did he say that to you? Oh, he said that to me when I was 35. He said, your mom made me take you twice a month. I, I was, you know, and then I was like, ooh, what, why did you say that to me? Uh, like I could have gone without hearing that. It's, it's and just then I intense. remembered being alone and he would party every weekend and I was just alone in the apartment. And his apart and uh, ooh, right. We never did anything together. So that's why when you told me that, it was, I, uh, it, I could relate to it. Yeah, because it, it, they're not my parents. No. Oh. They are sperm and uterus. That's it. They're, they're fucking dumb dumbs. They're jerks. Total dumb And I don't want to know them. I don't. No, you I don't, don't want to know them. And, and it shouldn't bother you. You know. Uh, it doesn't anymore. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm soon going to, I'm going to be changing my name because I don't want uh, my dad's name to, to live on. Like the Burkett part? Yeah. Yeah. Burkett's weird. It's fun saying Burkettiquette when I do something wrong, but uh, yeah, I'm changing my name. Wait till you hear the I new name. About, it's going to be good. All right. Oh yeah. I thought about doing the Prince thing and just going tally. That's it. One word. Like, why well, yeah, but, but nubs is better. Come on. Oh, nubs is way better. I go by nubs as well, but look at my band nubs and her studs. Mm -hmm. Going yeah, back. Yeah. I, I like this band. I like it better than the other band. I do too. Yeah. This one, I feel so it, like deep in my core, I'm just, I've never been more excited about anything in my whole life, to be honest with you. I want to see you roll around on stage. It's going to happen. Like you heard that first song. Yeah. I'm screaming now. I'm like, I'm like, I can scream. I didn't know I could scream. Yeah. We don't need to hear the really soft uh, folk singing. You know, I want to, no, I want to hear I'm you done, fucking, I want to hear you just like you were going down that street when it was 10 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Screaming down the hill. Well, thanks for telling all these uh, cool stories. It's really neat. Uh, what everyone really wants to know <laughs> is uh, hula hooping. Uh, apparently, you're very good at hula hooping. You, you hula hooped for 18 minutes <laughs> for the decline. And, yes, I did. Oh, you can see your boobs, too. You, you hula hooped naked. Naked. Oh, you have little pasties on. Oh, yeah. I mean, who the fuck are you? What the fuck can't you do? Put on a seatbelt. Put on a seatbelt. You know what? And you'll never get there. You'll never. I will. No, you won't. But you know why? Because you're lazy. By summer, I'm going to be driving my hot pink <laughs> Mini Cooper. And my dream, well, I have a lot of dreams. Well, my number one dream is to tour with my band with no effects. But my other dream <laughs> Is to tour with my band without no effects. And my other dream <laughs> is to is to drive to California in my new Mini Cooper and document it and show people how the modifications work. Because hundred thousand dollars of modifications. Do you wow! Know? But they can't make the seatbelt happen. No, that's going to happen. That's part of it. That's part of it. Yeah, it will be. I just don't. But you've been trying for years with your teeth, right? I it's too, it's too close to my butt. It's hard putting on a seatbelt, you know, being a non-deformed person. So I can, <laughs> I'm just using. Yeah. He, he set you up. He set me up, actually. He set me up. No, but that's, but that's what's cool is we can give each other shit. Yeah. You know, all the time. you know, I did you right back. So. You do. You get me back. Yeah. You made me ride on your scooter in Quebec City that one time. Crashed. Uh, that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to ask me? Oh. Or, you know, I could just show 
pictures of us together. Look at this. New Year's. Oh, how about New Year's? How about New Year's in Montreal? That was fucked up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was fucked up. Oh, oh, there's two fucked up things. Unless you want to ask me something about myself, we can talk about the two fucked up things. We can talk about the two fucked up things. Okay. First of all, we went back to that dungeon in Toronto with my ex, Soma, right? Yeah. And you were there, and they started hitting me with things. And yeah. And it was like, it turned into some competition. Yeah, the doms were competing. I, I, yeah, and I've, I've never been hit so hard. You're like, stop! You look scared. I was fucking, they were hitting me really hard. I, no, it looked horrible and painful. It was terrible. It was a terrible experience. It was not fun for me to watch that. Like, some some scenes are fun. That one was not fun. I could see what was happening. Yeah, and you were, you were stop. Can you stop? Stop, stop. Can you, clearly he's not enjoying this. Thank you for trying to stop them. I tried. It eventually tried. worked. Uh, and then New Year's Eve in Montreal. We're all hanging out in that hotel room with, with the snuff guys and uh yeah. and we're all having a good time. Having a good time, went bad. And the funny thing is, uh, you know, uh this person came after me with a vodka bottle, trying to smash me in the head with a vodka bottle. And at first I was like, is this a scene? You know, because it could have been. And like a year later, you're like, that scene was hot. No, I could tell it wasn't. Like it was violent. Yeah, it was, I, I had to block. It was at first. I was like, "Is this is this supposed to happen?" No, 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 no. Th- no there's no vodka bottle play that I know of. It was it was violent. I'm gonna I'm gonna drink my one bottle of vodka that I'm allowed tonight. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. Oh, I'm, I'm cute when I drink. You are cute when you drink your tiny tally sized nub sized bottle. Oh, this vodka. would get you so wasted. So wasted. I think we've had a drink before. Yeah. But I, roof- I, I roofied you. You passed out. No, you didn't. I wouldn't do that. I to, know you to wouldn't. You. I used to Mike. I used to roofie, roofie Eric Melvin all the time. Hilarious. Really? Uh, well, sort of. Uh, he used to take roofies before they were the date rape drug. He just used to take them. Just for fun? And, yeah. And have, I don't remember what I did last night. And he'd pee his bed. What's that? He, I know. That's why I wrote that song. Last night was really fun with a question mark. Because if you don't oh. remember it, it wasn't fun. He he would have no idea what he did. There are so many reasons why I stopped drinking. But one of them was being, you know how I said I love living life to the fullest? Like, so excited about something like no effect show or whatever. And then I forget it all? No. That's, there's no point. To yeah, that. But, but all those conversations we started with, you forgot, you forgot about the thalidomide. That was our first conversation, Tally. You forgot I about know, it. But it was, and I, I was, I and I was that. wasted. I remembered what happened to you, and I said, nothing. I was born like this. But you did, I do remember that. And then I was like, I'm too old. I mean, I'm too young. I'm too young for thalidomide. Yeah. All right. The funny thing is, when people go, Are you a thalidomide baby? Who says that? It's even worse. I don't know. Well, one of the first no effect songs was Thalidomide Child. Do you know what? um, Chai Pig used to call me Thalidomide. That was my name. That was my name. Here's to to Chai Pig. Chai Pig. You know, being being gay and losing all your teeth, better blowjobs. I'm just saying. It's true. I believe it. But when he had like two teeth. No, oh. Probably, probably not, not good. Not good. <laughs> not good. I love that you've thought about this. <laughs> I'm just, um, oh, I'm just riffing here. Come on, I, yeah, I, he, I haven't he, thought about chai he pigs. He was calling the mine, and then he goes, "Tally, I have a present for you." And I was like, he reaches in his bag. He's worse than you. He reaches in his bag, pulls out a skipping rope. How is that worse than me? I don't have a skipping well, like, rope. No, like the shock value jokes, you know. Yours are funny. His is like, oh my god, his are pretty funny. Thalidomide calling me, hey Thalidomide, come here. Yeah, like, well, but he, type, that type big, that's just who he is. What a character. He, who he was, I mean. Yeah, I have a lot of his art. Yeah, he, uh, I don't mean worse. I know you love me, but you know what I'm talking about. We both love shock value. Yeah, and uh, that's why you know we're such good friends because you're such an easy target. Uh, I'm. 
Lately, I'm a fucking target too. Jesus Christ, people like to pick on me. It's okay. It's really fun. And I think it's fun for me because you've picked on me since the day we met. So I just have to just keep. Yeah, but when you pick on me, it hurts my feelings. No, well, now you know how it feels. <sighs> I still don't know how it feels. But when you're when you're sweet to me, like when you text me last night saying, uh, thanks for being a dear friend. I, I love you. Like, it made my heart melty. But you don't say that shit that often. And I forget sometimes. Well, you know. But you can't say it too much, and then I'll take it for granted, maybe. No, I would never. Yeah. No, you are a dear, dear friend. And uh, I was more nervous about this podcast than any other one. Really? Uh, yeah. And, I, you know, I just did one with Nixon, and it was – didn't it was no, I'm, I'm kidding. It wasn't really Nixon. No, because uh, I care about you. And I wanted, I wanted to ask you some, you know, questions that brought up – you didn't cry. Feelings? You're, you're, you're heartless. You're cold. I cried. I'm tough. I'm tough. You are tough. Uh, thanks for being on my podcast. And if, like I said, I hate the endings of podcasts. I think I'm just going to push end and that's it. Like push. No. I, one more picture. Yeah. What? there. One more picture. There. That's. that's Which I'm one so is glad it? you don't have stilts anymore. Oh, gosh, me too. Is that the photo you put up? Oh, yeah, I'm going to make it bigger. Woo! No! <laughs> Those are my stilts, everyone. Circus yeah. No, I'll put up, I'll put up a, a better one. Uh, the promo of you. No, no, the hula hoop thing. That's how we're ending. Yeah, hula hoop. Hula hoop. All right, well, thanks for being on uh, my podcast. Thanks for having me. That was really fun. When you're allowed to come to California, please come down. I'd love that. Let's record. We have a hula hoop contest. Yeah, we're going to record stuff. Yeah, I'm, ex- I'm like so excited for that. I have butterflies. Oh, okay. You have butterflies. All right. You well, know that feeling? Sit- or do, you, do you know that feeling? Butterflies? In, in the stomach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of. I, I get nervous sometimes when I talk to people. I'm very nervous on stage. <clears throat> I'm kind of private. Okay, see, we're supposed to. This is. Now it gets oh, bad. Yeah. Let's cut it off. Okay, we'll ter- we'll take that out. Okay. Bye. Bye. Love you. Love you too.